Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to interview one of my subscribers, Jessie. Jessie was a data scientist at Microsoft, and she was able to land multiple job offers in a recent job search. She has accepted an offer with Facebook and has just joined it as a senior data scientist. In this video, Jessie will share with us all the useful tips and resources she has found helpful in her own job search. On top of that, she will also share with us valuable career advice to advance your data science career. Advice that I wish I had access to when I was early in my career. So let's get right into it. Hey, Jesse, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to have you here on my Data Interview Pro channel. Thanks, Emma. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I have been an audience for your YouTube channel for quite some time now. and. Uh, you know, actually both on YouTube and Medium. So thanks for the opportunity to uh, share my personal experience and uh, hopefully contribute a little back to the community. Thanks, Jesse. I know that you recently went through several data science interviews with different companies, and you have successfully landed multiple job offers, including Facebook, where you will be joining soon. So how about you actually take the rinse on this, Jesse, that you introduce yourself and just give us a brief overview of your background and your journey. Yeah, um, so my name is Jesse, and I've been working in data science and analytics field for about eight years now. Um, I actually started off in consulting, um, being mainly focused on um, to be business, uh, made the switch to tax several years ago. I was the original analytics lead for Expedia's B2B partner business. And most recently, I'm part of the Microsoft Cloud data science team uh, with an emphasis on cloud security and infra products. Um, so I recently actually went through a couple interviews. I focused on the uh, data science analytics track, and I also uh, made attempts to interview for product manager as well. Um, but happy to share um, some of my learnings today. Uh, before we get started, I kind of want to call out that interviews are really tough today uh, for most people. It is for me as well, even though I have eight years of experience now. Um, so if you feel like you're struggling, uh, you know, you're not alone on this journey. Uh, that's actually one of the main reasons I want to shoot this video with Emma today is to kind of really team up and support each other along the way. Yeah, that's really the goal of this video. And I like that you pointed out that interviews nowadays are not easy. And I can totally relate to that. Many people reach out to me to get help in getting interviews and preparing for interviews. And in today's video, you will be sharing with us some useful tips and resources, and we will get into all of those for sure. But before we talk about the success you have, I'm just very curious, since you mentioned that you have a background in consultation, how do you see the difference working as a consultant versus working as a data scientist in the tech industry? Yeah, so I had four years of experience in consulting before I started at Expedia. Um, I think one of the main reasons I uh, started my career in consulting is that I want to have really big exposures on different projects. So usually when, when you're in consulting and I was part of the um, actuarial and analytics track is that you get to try out different projects. Uh, usually you're on the rotate every couple months, you get to team up with people from different locations. Um, so it's really cool to be, you know, for one traveling a lot to the client side and have that face to face um, kind of stakeholder management experience. And um, so I thought that was really cool. I think the biggest uh, difference that I personally noticed is that um, you really get to see kind of the progression of your projects from end to end when you switch to, when I switched to TAC, um, you know, I, I kind of were participant in kind of the, the visioning and really building up the roadmap for a feature. Um, and then you actually get to develop it. Um, so it's more of a long-term process and you also get to see how you, uh, the products that you build gets you know, adopted. Um, so I think that's something that uh, was really attractive and um, you know, sounded very uh, rewarding and adventurous to me so that I made the switch. Do you feel your consulting experience helps you with making the transition into tech or those two are totally different and you have to learn from scratch? Yeah, so I have four years of experience in uh, management consulting. Um, one of the key differences that I thought was that uh, consulting, you get to try out many different projects. You get to travel to clients that, that also helped with the uh, stakeholder management experience and also working with different um, teams and with different backgrounds. Um, so I thought that was really actually really helpful in terms of making the transition to my first role at Expedia. 
um, is that I um, get to really partner closely with my um, stakeholders that sits in product team, engineering team, and uh, sales organization. Um, so that's something that I thought was a good transition coming from consulting to tech. Um, it also helps on kind of the framing and thinking about kind of how you approach a problem, how you kind of structure it to really get get it um, kind of drive forward. Um, so that was also uh, the second point I thought it was helpful. Cool. I think it gives people courage to make a transition from a consulting background to working as a data scientist in the tech industry. Now let's dive into your success story of being able to land multiple job offers in a recent job search. In fact, I want to share the story about how we get to know each other. I remember you reached out to me by a contact form I put up on my YouTube channel a few months ago, and you shared with me some challenges you were facing learning product and A-B testing because you did not have much experience in those areas. And you asked me if I was willing to do a mock interview for you. I really wanted to help you, so we did a mock interview together, and I remember you were definitely one of the top performers that I've done mock interviews and real interviews with. And even though you told me you did not have lots of experience on customer-facing products, you did so well in the mock interview. Your answers were very structured and in-depth. Obviously, you did lots of preparation before the mock interview, so no surprise at all, now you got multiple job offers. Could you share with us how you prepare before the mock interview? Yeah, um, so actually when I had the actual mock interview with you, I had probably already done maybe 15 to 20 mock interviews with my study group. Um, so that was one thing that was really key is that I treated the mock interview with you very seriously and I treated it as a, as a real interview. I remember I was, I, was, uh, I was getting a little nervous waiting for your call. <laughs> um, but I think the key, um, and I try to summarize a little bit here is um, I try to make sure that I feel prepared um, coming up to, to do the mock interview uh, with you. And I think before that, I try to uh, mock interview with other people. Um, and uh, it's really kind of three steps that I've taken. Uh, the first one is to really draw um, experiences from my projects and my, my experience um, to really understand uh, which path I want to go, because for data science, it's a really broad subject. And I um, personally wanted to go uh, down the path for kind of analytics and inferences. Um, and then I uh, used a lot of your YouTube content uh, videos for the data science analytics fundamentals on like stats and coding and um, A-B testing and product sense. Uh, that was really helpful as well. So I actually did all of that preparation work before I had my uh, mock interview with you. Yeah, sounds like you did lots of preparation and you treated very seriously. I really like that because based on my observation, people who do great in mock interviews are those who take it seriously. You also mentioned that you've done a bunch of mock interviews before the one with me. I'm curious, how do you find people to do mock interviews with? Yeah, so I feel very lucky. I have friends who are also data scientists at different tech companies. So I have reached out to them, uh, maybe two or three people that I um, specifically set time to uh, went through some of my kind of uh, struggles or some of my points where I feel like I didn't get enough exposure on my day-to-day uh, -day job. I, I have probably two to three years of experience directly on like product infra, um, and, and, but it wasn't that much, right? But, and I was interviewing for kind of a senior role. Uh, so I set time with them who already have experience in the industry. Uh, in addition to that, I also um, asked for kind of forming study groups online on like online forums. Um, and there were also friends, my friends who are also um, product managers and business analysts. We um, prepared uh, maybe once or twice every, every week on the weekends. Wow, you're a great example of practice makes perfect. So for others who also want to leverage mock interviews to fast track their interview preparation, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, I think really um, like practice a lot and treat it seriously. Um, I, I think and not only to mock interviews, it's to any questions. Um, like for example, it could be like behavioral question or like a project highlight. Um, like write it down and like maybe use the voice memo 
and um, listen back to it and see if there are things that can be improved. Um, like, was it really concise? Was it structured really well? Um, especially for mock interviews, I think for a product sense question, um, I leveraged a lot from this uh, other channel, uh, in addition to yours called Exponent. Um, they have, it's, it's mainly for product managers, but I found it really helpful uh, for data scientists, uh, especially analytics track to think like a product owner uh, so that you have, um, you know, it's, it's more about your structure and framing and, and your logical thinking of how you decomponentize everything versus the actual um, product ideas, which you know you might not have a lot of exposure to, uh, myself included. Um, so I thought that was really helpful. I think <laughs> thinking back that my consulting background was also helpful in the business acumen and business sense questions mm -hmm. um, that, um, that was kind of relatable. Those are really great tips. Thank you for sharing. Other than doing mock interviews to practice your product knowledge, are there any other tips or suggestions you have for people who lack experience in developing customer-facing products but want to land a job in a B2C company or product-driven company? Yeah, and, and that was actually one of my pain points as well as I was preparing for it early on is I didn't feel really confident because I don't have that many years of experience in, in directly product-facing uh, development work for, from data science perspective. Um, but I was thinking that, you know, we are we are all customers as well. So next time when you're ordering food from DoorDash or ordering delivery from, um, you know, Instacart or posting your next uh, Instagram uh, stories uh, or, or even calling, you know, Uber, um, maybe you can think about, um, you know, how was this experience? Uh, was it smooth um, at each step of the way? Um, did you notice any latency issues, you know, from a backend system perspective? Um, was there any errors that thrown out? Um, like, if there are any ways you think you can provide feedback to the developers? Um, sometimes I personally gotten feedback, uh, hear back from them to kind of uh, thank my, um, you know, suggestions and that they're improving on it. So I think um, even if you don't have a lot of direct product experience, uh, you can try to pivot um, the other way around and think from a user, a customer's perspective, uh, and try to have some brainstorm experience, uh, maybe with yourself and with your friends, um, that you can feel relatable to. Um, I think that to the point, if you can have those product sense um, conversation, um, more like a discussion versus an interview where you're trying to find the right answer, I think that's that's when you're you know you've nailed it. I love that. I'm glad you mentioned that. Even though if you don't have direct work experience, you could always think about ideas to improve products from a customer's perspective. It's very helpful to develop your product sense. On top of that, one common asked question in data science interviews is about how to improve a company's product. If you have this kind of practice on a regular basis, it will help you with having a deep conversation with the interviewers during interviews. I think this tip would be really helpful for everyone who's listening. So are there any other tips you want to share with our audience to prepare for data science interviews or to learn data science in general? Yeah, happy to. I, um, I think one of the first things I did was to really find out which path I want to go. Um, you know, data science, you uh, have a lot of choices. It's a very broad subject. And so I think picking your career path is really important to understand, do you want to interview for analytics track or do you want to go for MLE or do you want to go for software engineering developer who are focused on ML? Um, so that those are different things that you want to really figure out before you apply uh, job op uh, applications. Um, and then a couple of things I also spend a lot of time on is uh, to really spend time and think back, do a, respect, a retrospective and do a uh, write down a project that you feel really proud of, um, that you want to highlight on. I think finding something that really motivates you and that you're really passionate about um, is really key to like being able to find the right next role and play to your strengths. Um, I, uh, I have read some blog posts as well, so it's not really related to any um, kind of tech uh, technical um, Doppler execution. It's something more about um, like thinking from a broader picture and understanding where you are at different stages of your career. I cannot agree with you more. My philosophy is also to find one direction you are really passionate about and focus on it. In that way, you feel less overwhelmed and you are more efficient to land a job offer and be good at it. 
So Jesse, thank you so much for sharing all those helpful tips and suggestions. Are there other words of wisdom you want to share with our audience today? Yeah, um, so just sharing a little more on my personal um, kind of uh, retrospective is, I, I think sometimes I, uh, even myself, I've underestimated the importance of communication skills. I think sometimes people like to call it soft skills, but it's really important and it's kind of hard to gain as well, especially if you're early on in your career to, um, you know, not only focus on the technical depth and execution, uh, but also thinking um, about how you can grow um, the skills to work across different functions, to try to deliver message uh, from people with different audiences and different backgrounds to really help drive the projects forward together. Um, I think, um, you know, being a good listener, try to have empathy, uh, try to have, find those common grounds uh, so that you can partner with other teams. Uh, those are also very important skills to have. Um, I think in addition to that, uh, this is something I've recently picked on, I think over the last few years as well, is to, um, you know, try to build your personal brand and reputation. I think um, that if you can in any way to become a, um, you know, SME in a domain knowledge, um, doesn't have to be a big feature that you own, but if you can help grow a domain knowledge and become the expertise in that area that people will um, kind of come to you and you'll be known for um, a certain domain. And uh, I think that kind of linking back to my earlier point is really to find something that you're passionate about, right? Um, yeah. So I think those are, um, you know, maybe just two things I wanna highlight before, um, before we close up. This is so insightful, I totally agree with you on that. Soft skills are important in your day-to-day -day job as a data scientist, especially when you collaborate with other professionals in accounting on some cross-functional projects. Also, I want to echo what you've mentioned on building a personal brand to become the go-to person and the expert in a specific area or domain. That could help you advance your data science career. Thanks so much, Jesse, for your time. I really appreciate you joining me today to share all of those useful tips and learnings. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and uh, best of luck on finding the next uh, rope.